Hello everyone, my name is Patrick F. Ryan, Programs and Education at the Buffalo History Museum. And today we're in bustling downtown Buffalo, New York to bring you another episode of History Untold, that new web series where we take a look at some of the more unknown stories in Buffalo's past and we tell you a little bit more about it. Now, if you've ever traveled through uh, the downtown portions of the Queen City, you may have taken note of the beautiful and unique architecture that scatters the city's skyline. Now, perhaps no building serves more of an example of that architecture than Hotel Lafayette, positioned right behind me. But did you know that it was Louise Blanchard Bethune, a woman from Western New York and the nation's first female architect, who was the chief designer of that beautiful building? Louise Blanchard Bethune was born July 21st, 1856, in the small town of Waterloo, New York, located just a short distance from Seneca Falls, which had its women's rights convention just eight years before. Louise was undoubtedly inspired by her fellow 19th century women to pursue a life of her own. And now we are on site at the Buffalo History Museum, and uh, luckily I am joined by Kelly Hayes Macaloni, uh, architect and Bethune biographer, to lend a little bit more insight into Bethune's uh, feminist leanings. Thanks so much, Patrick. Louise Bethune was so very interesting because she was both, uh, from my perspective, both a, a, a woman that we would understand today in contemporaries' view, but obviously she was also very much a woman of her time. But remarkable uh, is also the fact that she became an architect at such an early stage in the profession's uh, life. Louise's parents were both teachers, and after being homeschooled up to the age of 11, she was sent to Buffalo Central to attend school. It was here that one of her classmates, a boy, made a caustic remark about her not being able to pursue the field of architecture. Louise, she took it on the chin and decided to prove her classmates wrong, and she decided that her life goal was to become the first female architect in the United States. So why architecture? Architecture, I mean, many professions were not open to women or they were very much, you know, did not encourage women to pursue a profession. Medicine being one, dental medicine, law, etc. But all of those, it, the, the concern was uh, that women didn't have the intellectual ability to pursue the profession. That was absolutely the case in architecture as well. The added concern about women becoming architects was the fact that they didn't think women had the physical stamina or should be pursuing architecture because of her dress. So at the time, architects, of course, were expected to stand over eight, 10, 12 hour days over a drafting table. And uh, architects were expected to supervise construction. And so uh, even though women had been calling for the need for women architects in the 1860s, 1870s, it was automatically cons considered inappropriate and laughable that a woman be, could be an architect because of her clothing. She felt that any person, woman or man, should have the ability to choose their profession based on their natural talent, not necessarily on their gender. In 1874, Louise graduated from Buffalo Central. And while she considered going to Cornell for architecture, she decided to take an apprenticeship with local Buffalo architect, Richard Waite. She spends five years working for Waite, learning and mastering the arts of drafting, before, at the age of 25, opening up her own architectural firm in Buffalo. She became an architect in 1881. I mean, that was just after uh, women were actually being admitted into universities. And I think it was because of that uh, and Cornell's new school of architecture that she had the confidence to pursue architecture. In 1881, Louise, before opening up her own firm, she brings along her friend and fellow draftsman from Richard Waite's office, Robert Bethune. The two marry and the new firm is now called 
Bethune, and Bethune. The city of Buffalo was entering its golden age, and they were looking for fresh and new architects to bring a unique flair and style to the Queen City. After designing a multitude of buildings throughout Buffalo, including 18 schools, Bethune was admitted in 1885 to the Western Association of Architects. Three years later, her work started to be recognized nationally as she became the first woman to be admitted to the AIA or the American Institute of Architects. Perhaps what Bethune might be most well known for was her stand that she made uh, when asked to design the women's building at the Columbian Exposition. Sadly, the, comp the fee for the competition was just one-tenth of the, the designer's fee for the other buildings. So Louise, she was asked by Burnham to submit uh, a design and uh, she refused. And she refused on two grounds. One was that other male architects were granted these, they were selected and uh, they were granted those commissions. The second reason, which may have been the more important reason, was because of the disparity in the pay. Her last interview that she granted many years later in 1913, she said that a women's road to emancipation was through pay equity. As far as Bethune's works that still exist today, um, most people are obviously pretty familiar with Hotel Lafayette as kind of her crown jewel achievement, but um, any other buildings that you can speak of that still are standing today uh, in the city? Yes, there are a number of really wonderful buildings um, in addition to the Hotel Lafayette, which of course is, was her opus. Sadly, all of her uh, educational buildings, the buildings that she took the most pride in, they were demolished. There, of her buildings, there are about 30 buildings that are still standing. Most of them are residences. And, and of those, probably the most significant one is on um, uh, Summer Street at the corner of Summer and Elmwood. And that was the uh, Kellogg Spencer Mansion. It's, it's a wonderful Medina Sandstone building. And, um, and now that's been divided into apartments. Uh, by 1891, uh, she had very much cooled on residential design and she felt very strongly that women should not specialize in, in domestic architecture, she called it. And again, it was because of pay equity. And now we are inside perhaps Bethune's magnum opus, Hotel Lafayette. Constructed in 1904 and named after the French Revolutionary War hero, Marquis de Lafayette, this building costs the equivalent of about $35 million today to construct. Now, this building features 225 guest rooms and some of the United States' first fireproof architecture. Visitors from across the nation could come and stay in this hotel that was known for its grandiosity and architectural allure. As you can see, Louise Blanchard Bethune, she spared no expense when designing this architectural marvel. Unfortunately, upkeep on historic buildings like this, well, it can prove to be daunting. Luckily, in 2012, a new initiative spent $42 million to restore this once great building back to its former glory days. Now, thanks to 2012's restoration efforts, you can check into the Hotel Lafayette as a guest and have a night stay in one of their magnificent rooms. Or you can just head on down to the Pan American Grill to get yourself dinner and a drink. And if you ever do visit, take a look at the beer list. You will see numerous beers named after Louise Blanchard Bethune, including number one on the draft list, the Louise Blonde Lager. After Hotel Lafayette's construction and by the end of her career, Louise Blanchard Bethune was, indeed, the nation's leading female architect. Not only did she change Buffalo's city skyline, but she also changed the role that women played in the workforce.
On December 18, 1913, the great architect Louis Blanchard Bethune passed away, leaving behind a legacy of over 180 buildings throughout western New York and New England. Today, the great architect is buried in Buffalo's Forest Lawn Cemetery.